Today, let me tell you all about a particular race of pink monkeys. The pink monkeys live happy, healthy lives. Baby monkeys went to school in the day and spend their evening swinging off of branches and playing little monkey games. The adult monkeys went to work, gathered the seasonal fruits and vegetables for the dinner table, and tended to their little ones. The monkeys were particularly excited about fruit season and they were waiting for the yearly mangoes that came on the trees. As time went by, grandma and grandpa monkeys passed away when their time came and the world moved on as per the rules of nature. The pink monkeys were lean, healthy and happy. They rarely felt sick and there were no widespread diseases in the entire pink monkey population. Until about 150 years ago, things changed for the pink monkeys. Industrialization, capitalism, agriculture, technology, all of them came into the picture and brought their vested interests with them. What good was a race of healthy, happy, and nature-loving monkeys? There was no money to be made there. Giant corporations, of course, exploited the monkeys. What if the monkeys' favorite fruit, if you remember the mangoes, was available on demand 24-7? The monkeys would not be able to resist, they thought. And that is exactly what happened. Food that would otherwise seasonally be available once a year was now available 24-7 in supermarkets right next to the monkeys' homes. And soon enough, the pink monkeys were addicted. The age-old wisdom of health from nature was lost. The entire food that they were consuming every single day made the monkeys lethargic. It made them stay indoors rather than go out and swing on branches and trees like they used to. They started living in a faster, more competitive world, lesser sleep, more stress. They needed three coffees a day to stay up, alcohol and drugs to relax, cigarettes to stay alert, and pills for headaches and migraines. Today, this is the race of pink monkeys. One in five baby monkeys is overweight or obese. One in three is at the risk of a chronic condition relating to their heart and other inflammatory diseases. One in five is at the risk of cancer. Chronic depression, anxiety, thyroid, PCOD, asthma are all so common that it's become almost normal to have these. The corporation's interest lay vested in keeping these monkeys sick. And today the race of pink monkeys continues to deteriorate slowly and steadily. Grim story, right? A classic case of self-sabotage. Does this sound familiar? If you haven't guessed already, this race of pink monkeys is all of us. The entire human race. And today I'm here to make that claim that all of us are living in a healthcare pandemic that we are unaware about. We are all sick and we are the pink monkeys. Let me attempt to prove that. I want you all to stand up for a minute. If your lives, lives of your family or friends, have been affected by any of these, please have a seat. Cancer, diabetes, mental health, heart problems, obesity. The rest of you may sit. As expected, almost, I would say 85 to 90% of you are sitting down. And you don't have to feel alone. My own mother went through a painful two years of breast cancer. She lost all her hair and had to go through the physical and emotional trauma of chemotherapy. Soon after, I went to get an ultrasound of my breast. Turns out I have the same conditions that have a high risk of someday becoming a malignant cancerous tumor. Both my grandparents are on six different cholesterol and blood pressure tablets and there is heart disease running in our family. These diseases, these silent killers, are also called NCDs or non-communicable diseases that are affecting or have affected at least one person we all know. And I know that if I go on leading an unhealthy lifestyle, I have an 85% chance of getting, if not one, but all of the above diseases. The burden that our families gave us, a burden that we might give our children, and a burden that none of us ever asked for. 
Yet at the end of the day, we all light up a cigarette and with a beer in one hand say, you know, this won't happen to me. Problems and sickness are always for other people. All I care about is, is if I fit into that tight dress or you know, what I'm wearing looks good, right? That's what I thought as well. Let me tell you all a bit about myself. I was born an obese baby. I deleted all pictures, so this is what I have. I was born an obese baby and stayed overweight until well into a few years ago. Imagine me into two and a half times. According to my family, of course, I was a very healthy child. You know the definition of a healthy child in India, right? Um, my parents used to give me an ice cream and a packet of chips every day after school because I did well in my studies. I never played a sport in my life because I was not encouraged to. Boys never looked at me and girls always loved me because they always looked good next to me in pictures. I got bullied a lot. I, I in fact, even got called the equator in school. Um, cried a lot after looking in the mirror and my self-esteem dropped to an all-time low. Consequently, I went through the mental and physical strains of trying to be a good-looking teenager, only to starve myself and then binge on food, a treacherous cycle that never seemed to end. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship with my body, and I didn't even know it. And that was probably the worst part of my life. All up until I decided to change it all. Today, as a mentally and physically healthy woman standing before you, I haven't fallen sick in the last two years. I have endless energy throughout the day. I can lift 200 pounds off the floor. I can run 15 kilometers without stopping. I can do multiple pull-ups. Thank you. And of course, I love the body that I used to fit. Now, people always ask me, Priya, how did you do this? You know, which dietitian did you go to? Which supplement did you use? Tell us a secret, tell us 10 tips, tell us a shortcut, anything. How did you get there? And today, I'm here to tell you all how all of you can get to where I was. Are you all ready to hear the big secret? Yes. yes. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is, all of you already know exactly how to get there. So I can sense a lot of disappointment, okay? But I'm sorry, I'm not here to give you a pill, I'm not here to give you a supplement, and I'm not here to tell you that one glass of red wine is equal to one hour at the gym, okay? It's not. Now I know all of you are wondering, if we all already know what to do, why are we like this? Why aren't we able to do it? Why are we still the pink monkeys? So let me get this straight. Are you all trying to tell me that you don't know what junk food is? We all know what it is, right? We all know that we must cut sugar out of our diet. We all know that we must exercise five times a day, sorry, five times a week for 20 minutes a day, that we need to sleep for eight hours a day, that we don't need to smoke, we need to stop eating junk food, like I said. We know all these basics. And it's so frustrating for me that even though we all know this, none of us do anything about this. Okay, we all want to pay for some shortcut, we want to pay for some pills, we always want to ask someone for tips, we want to read all these articles, and we're just not doing the basics that we all already know. See, the key to being healthy, the key to building long-lasting healthy habits is to take small steps, make small changes, and use your common sense. Because we all entirely need to change our lifestyle. We need to change the way we look at our food. We need to change the way we look at our physical activity. And of course, we need to change the way we look at our sleep. Now, it took me four years to get to where I am today. And the reason it took me four years, and four years is a very long time, right? The reason it took me four years is because I was trying everything under the sun. I even bought those, those vibrating heated belts that make you lose weight, okay? I'm that person who buys those things online. And I realized that I was completely avoiding the basics that I already knew. Trust me, if I was just doing the basics, I could have done this immediately. And the moment I started focusing on what I already know, what we just spoke about, everything started working in my favor. So I asked myself, why is it that I wasn't doing what I already knew? Why is it that none of us are doing what we already know? And the only difference that I saw between the old me and the new me was the reason why. And I realized that I had a strong enough why and a strong enough motivator that pushed me and guided me and took me to actually implement what I already know today. Now, if you see me, all the whys that I have, if you see my own whys, my own whys drive me every single day. 
We all have a short-term goal, and that short-term goal, I know, all of us want to look good, all of us want to lose weight. The first question that people ask is, how do I live five kgs in three days, right? Um, but that, what I'm trying to tell you is, is a short-term goal. It is a subset of the longer-term health goal, the longer-term why that I want you all to cultivate today. My why is whether it was me becoming stronger, whether it was me climbing a rope, whether it was me becoming a role model for my own family to be healthy, or, or for example today, my why is running a healthcare organization called Health Set Go, which now is putting thousands of children on the path to health. Okay? These are all my why's. Now I know. I know change is hard. I know you are not used to doing this. And like we already established, we're not going to take any shortcuts. Okay? And I'm not saying don't have a weekend. I'm still that person who loves her burger, who loves her fries. I love a good burger and fries. That's my weakness. And I'm not telling you that you can't have all of these things. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a hack. The only shortcut that I'm going to give you today, and that shortcut is the 18-20 rule. And 80% of the time, I want you all today to make a commitment that you're going to do the basics that you already know, all right? Do the basics, make small changes, take small steps, and 80% of your entire life do these basics, and the rest of the 20%, let's pretend you never saw me, we never had this talk, I was never talking to you, you know, you can erase all of this out of your memory, all right? So now I want you all to close your eyes. Please close your eyes. I will tell you when to open them. And I want you today to find your why. Find the thing that will drive you. Find what will motivate you. We don't want to wait for another heart attack in our family. We don't want to wait for somebody else falling sick. We want to be the role models. We want to be the motivators. Please open your eyes. When the going gets tough, when you are feeling weak, trust me, this why that you have found is going to push you harder in the right direction. And trust me, it's going to get much easier over time. And it's just going to become a way of life, like it has become my way of life. And it's not a struggle anymore. It's not something hard that I'm doing every single day. And I hope that using our why, we can all eliminate disease from this world, we can all change this world, and we can save the pink monkeys. Thank you.